my experience in Biakpan, brethren. Let me tell you a little about my days in Biakpan. It happened that during one Christmas period, the people in the community approached me and requested for my own contribution, which would be used in the purchase of a goat for the Christmas celebration. My reply was that I had no interest in such things. And when I came to Calabar, the same thing happened again. I also gave them exactly the reply I gave to the people of Biakpan. It was from then that I realized that it was Christ that was acting in me. He does not associate with such thing. When you see such a person around you, know that he is the abode of Christ. He does not eat fish or meat or drink or fornicate and anything mundane has no relevance to him but in your case you keep complaining of lack of fish and meat for you to eat do you realize that if you seek to be the abode of christ you have to desist from such desires i am not enjoining you to fast or abstain from eating fish and meat but I am disclosing to you that if you desire this power which you request, it therefore becomes a must that you abstain completely from gratifying the flesh, which you do. When you do this, you will resemble me and you will be able to speak and the dead will be raised. If you watch me carefully, you will realize that I have no association with mundane things. I go about on my own quietly and simply without being interested in what you eat or wear. That is why I declare that this gospel will not be given out so easily for publication. It is strictly for those who desire this divine power. All along, I have been passing through all these measures without knowing that it was the Christ in me that was responsible for it. Sometimes I wonder the type of person that I am. Oftentimes I ponder what manner of man are you that you do not even eat properly. You have no desire for the mundane things. The source of my power, brethren, even when I saw somebody wearing a new dress, it was never important to me. All these things that I did, I never knew that what I was doing. But what is the case today? That is why, out of joy, I am revealing this thing to you because Right from the beginning of this week, I am so much full of joy so that this recondite wisdom, this source of life, will be imparted to you. And blessed are those who will put this gospel into practice because when this is done, you will be like me. You will cause the dead to rise, the lame to walk, the deaf to hear, the dumb to talk, and many other wonders to happen. I know that many will not be able to put this gospel into practice, but many will. And, and to those who will, this is an advice to you. After every fasting, break it with only one piece of banana and go on with that. Also, Abstain from expensive dresses. Go barefoot. Do not think of yourself anymore. Do not apply perfume or ornaments. Disregard yourself and you will become the dwelling place of power. I am not surprised to see 
that lawyer from Lagos who spent 12 years studying law in Europe and came back in 1981. But since then, he has not been interested in his law books. It is not surprising to see him today abandoning the law bodies and getting on with the father's publication. 160 copies altogether. Everywhere he goes to, he will be found with these books that will form the basis of his word. It would not be surprising that when you see him, you will want to give him a kick because he has completely destroyed the, the desire of the flesh and he is now leading a normal life in his little apartment he is very contented with it and he is a vegetarian because he has found christ in him when you come shouting and falling down before me i used to ponder what you have seen in me but little did i know that it is the christ in me who is operating to your understanding it is Olumba that is doing the work. Those of you who have been seeking to know who I am, have you not known me today? Let the first Bible lesson be read again. First Bible lesson, Revelation chapter 7 verses 15 to 17. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. Neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Brethren, so many of you are thinking that food is the most important thing for the children of God. If you see the real child of God, you will know him by his words and actions you will not know him because of the house he lives in or the type of food he eats. He has completely abstained from what worldly people regard as important. You are advised to fast not in order to get rich, but rather to make yourself an abode of Christ. It is then that you will witness the glory of God in you. It is not a surprise that our brother Paul considered everything insignificant in order that he may win Christ and be found in him. Therefore, if you are seeking for those divine powers, here is the rule. You must surrender yourself completely and disassociate from all forms of carnality because they who are Christ have crucified the flesh on the cross so that they may put on the glory of Christ. If you want to make yourself an abode of Christ, it does not consist of endless words but it consists in total surrendering to the will of God. When you do this, you will see Christ establishing him an abode in you. It is on this note that it is said that whoever abides in God becomes one with him and stands out different from the people of this world. This person does his things in accordance with God's desires and lives entirely 
the life of God. Read the second lesson again. Second lesson, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 13 to 14. Meats for the belly, and the belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now, the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God hath both raised up the Lord, and will also raise up us by his own power. Man is God's only abode, brethren. It is true that man toils and searches for food every time. But whoever abides in God has enough to eat. So he has no desire for food and the material things of this world. Did you know before now that God created man for himself? Why then do you defile yourself by indulging in immorality, in medication and other vices? The secret revealed in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star is priceless. What has before now eluded the entire world is now revealed to you. The fact is that though he is present here, the world still seeks for him everywhere without seeing him. Our second lesson has made it clear that the body is not meant for fornication but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. Therefore, it is wrong and indeed sorrowful to see people indulge in the use of cosmetics, immorality, in medication, in incision that defiles the body, which is God's temple. You are God's dwelling place. He created you for that purpose and so you should not indulge in worldly pleasures in order not to defile your body. Therefore, it is because of this that Paul said, But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but as dung, that I may win Christ. That was in Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 to 8. This issue corresponds with the biblical portion that states, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Beloved, I am declaring truly that every true brotherhood member is higher than the world and cannot be destroyed. No weapon of any kind fashioned against you shall prosper. There is no spirit, nor angel, no poison, no weapon, no conspiracy, etc. that can hurt any true brotherhood member. Brethren, many of you before now had the wrong belief that fasting, ministry work, watch and pray, and various activities allowed here in the kingdom are stepping stones to richness, to majesty, to educational growth. This is completely false. The truth is that you are introduced to all these activities so that your body may be made holy for Christ. For once you are holy, 
Christ will find that dwelling place in you, after which you cannot be destroyed. You will walk on top of the world. Dear brethren, do not be weary in practicing these injunctions of the kingdom, for there is a target that must be reached. We should desire to stand the rest we should desire to stand the test of time always and receive the excellency of Christ's knowledge. Beloved, have you now seen why all the true members of this kingdom are above all things and beings? Once you have Christ dwelling in you, you will receive the excellency of his knowledge and as a result you will not know you will not grow old you will not see death nor any luck or any sickness or any lamentation i am convinced that since you have heard this truth you shall reverse your actions and devote all your time and efforts towards having Christ in you and acquiring the excellency of his knowledge. After achieving this, you are filled whole and without problem. In fact, with Christ and his knowledge in you, you have boundless peace, joy, and liberty. You can never get old and wither away if you consecrate your body for Christ. The Lamb is with man, brethren. The Lamb who is on the throne is always ready and willing to shower his blessing as long as you live according to his dictates. All that is expected of you is to put on Christ in you as you try to adhere to the gospel of today. This beatitude, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God, means total freedom, a state where you have no thought for yourself. You desire nothing and make no request whatsoever. Anyone who is poor in spirit sees God lavishly and is convinced within him that God is all and in all. And since God dwells in such a person, all that he does is full of happiness. His ways are always full of joy. Read the, first, read the golden text again. Golden text, Matthew chapter 5 verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Two cocks, two cocks cannot crow at the same time. Brethren, as I pointed out earlier, whoever is a partaker of the above blessing of all things, he neither laments nor have any request to place before God, for he is always satisfied, always whole, always filled, and always liberated. Such a person always remains joyous, for he is always with him. He is always in peace. He is always decisive, stable, and correct in what he does. He never has divided minds. Beloved, as two cocks can never crow at the same time on one roof, so can you not serve God and Satan. 
the Holy Spirit wants a person who is decisive and surrenders totally to his will. He does not want a person who, because of one carnal lust or the other, refuse to adhere to his instructions at any time. God is closer to you than the tongue is to the teeth. And as true as it is that one with God is a majority, your duty in life should be to surrender yourself in totality to him and, and consecrate yourself also for him to dwell therein. You need to put this injunction into practice for it is very benefiting to strengthen your faith. He has authoritatively pronounced this. But beware of men for they will deliver you up to these councils and they will scourge you in their synagogue and ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake for a testimony against them and the gentile but when they deliver you up take no thought how or what ye shall speak for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak for it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of our Father which speaketh in you. That was in St. Matthew chapter 10, verses 17 to 20. Christ is your solicitor, brethren. He is your solicitor. Always be confident and hopeful to emerge as the victor. Whenever Christ is at the head of affairs, division of labor is not necessary, for since he is all and in all, he has his ways of designing things to suit his purpose at all times. In fact, we are all empty while Christ alone does all things, this gospel constitutes the covenant and promise of God. Brethren, it is said that a stroke of the cane is enough for the wise. Let he who has ears to hear, hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.